Why? Why do we have to look at everything through a spiritual prism? Can't something just be fun once and for all? Yeah. Um, something can definitely be fun. There's nothing wrong with something being fun. I think what's concerning is the way that we pose the question almost makes it seem as if being spiritual is an additional layer that you have to consider when in reality the human being is what we call psychosomatic, right? He is both soul and body. So being a human being means that you are always doing something that is going to relate back to your spiritual life. Because you are a spiritual being, whether you like it or not. So to suggest that you can disconnect the spiritual from your person when you do something that you render to be not spiritual doesn't make any sense. So everything will have a spiritual implication, whether you like it or not. I understand, but if I may, Father, can... Do you understand the guilt that that kind of puts on someone when they want to just enjoy a show or listen to music? It's difficult because I can know that something has vulgarity in it as a as a song or as you know music, or that something has inappropriate scenes in a movie or a show or killing or whatever it be. And if you're telling me no, I can't separate from my spirit, you're essentially telling me, you know, be okay with it as long as you can bring it with you into church, for example. Is that what we're saying? I think what I'm trying to highlight and what the church has always taught us is that for you to suggest that you could put aside the spiritual in anything that you do, then what you're falling into is that trap of there is stuff that is secular and stuff that is spiritual. That is not how we live our lives. A human being is not meant as a Christian to wear two different hats. That sometimes I am secular, sometimes I am of the world, behave the world, enjoy the world, and there are other times where I act as if the world is bad and has to be shunned and I don't want to bring in the spiritual because in doing that, it makes me feel guilty. If you are feeling guilty, then that's wonderful because whether you like it or not, that's the Holy Spirit crying out inside you and telling you, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. What if I don't feel guilty? <laughs> then that's a conversation between your father of confession. <laughs> I think we have to remember the reality of who we are, right? Uh, so sometimes, again, like, like Father Anthony was saying, we live these divided lives, but in reality, we are created in the image of God. So th this is a reality, and we always forget that part. So if I want to do something that will be affecting me in a negative way, well, it's a choice that I have, but, but it will affect me in a negative way. So it's not necessarily something that I can consider doing without understanding the repercussions. So what I'm trying to say is that if you have, if you think that as a person, as a human being created in the image of God, I can actually do certain things without negative repercussions. When God himself calls them sin, then I'm living in delusion. So, so forgive me. What if I'm not doing something negative? I'm coming home from work. I'm coming home from school. I just had an exam. I want to watch a show. It's funny. It's going to have inappropriate content, jokes, whatever it be. I want to listen to music in my car ride home, coming home from school again or work or whatever it be. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm letting loose. I'm relaxing. It's very difficult. It's difficult for me to say, okay, I have to shun everything that, you know, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus listen to? What would, he wouldn't watch what I'm watching. It wouldn't be appropriate, right? I'm, I'm not denying that. That's, that's a tough task, don't you think? Especially in the world we live in. That, that's a tough ask, is it not? I mean, I understand that it's difficult because so much in the world now has become increasingly dark, right? Meaning sinful, right? Um, and I understand, so I understand the challenge <clears throat> there. But at the same time, again, we have to remember or differentiate at least between what is secular yet clean Versus what is sinful and harmful, right? So, so there are certain things. So you're saying, I want to get, I want to let loose. And that's fine. Everybody needs to relax once in a while, me being the first, right? That's something that, uh, that is good um, and needed, absolutely. But if I'm going to start tapping into what is sinful to relax, hmm. that in itself is problematic because, yes, I might relax now, I might enjoy something now, but on the long run, and, and especially on a spiritual level deep within, there's going to be negative repercussions there, right? And, and, and at the end of the day, what I'm doing is not really relaxing. However, if I'm tapping into clean, secular music once in a while, 
albeit it's not necessarily edifying, but it's okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's not sin as a whole, right? And, and there's different levels of spiritual lives between one person and the other. You know, to, to, to one person, he can do a bit of clean secular. Another, he needs a lot of clean secular versus what is holy and what is edifying, right? Mm -hmm. And that is okay. I mean, we, we are all very different and we have different needs. But in doing so, we should not be making what is wrong right. Mm. We shouldn't pretend that this is okay, this is fine. And often what we do is that we, we say things like, well, everybody does it. Mm. And I get that, but, but if I say everybody does it, what is the implication? So who holds or who is the source of morality at this point? Right? Is, it, mm. is, it, is it the people? Is it God? Right? So it's definitely a challenge. So I don't want to come up or come across uh, as very you know, stringent and, and it has to be done that way. That's not the case at all. But when it comes to that, that line, right, that red line, when I step into sin, I think we have to understand that this line should not be crossed as much as possible. So, Can I actually jump in for yes, a second? Yes, please. There's something the Father said that I think is really important. Um, there, there also has to be enough wisdom and discernment to be able to understand that not everything is segregated into what is good and what is bad. When we talk about things that are good, there is a spectrum even there. Mm. There is good, better, and best. Mm. If you want to talk about what's best, then yes, absolutely. We should find comfort and enjoyment and even entertainment in the things that are edifying and spiritual in their context. Mm. Take that just one step lower. You can then move to the secular that still has a spiritual benefit, and yet it's not entirely immersed in the hyper-spiritual. What is good, you can still find stuff that is secular, not blatantly spiritual, but still there's nothing intrinsically wrong with it. There is good, better, and best. What is dangerous is when you start going to the other side of the spectrum. There is bad, worse, and worst. Mm. If you start navigating into the bad, worse, and worst, you shouldn't be in that category at mm. all. There is sufficient content in this category of good, better, and best for you to be able to still find that freedom that you speak of. So then let me go into the middle category and the, the not-so-good category, okay? The question we get asked a lot is, what if my moral compass is good? What if I'm you know, a father, I have children, I serve in the church, I, you know, I, I guide youth, whatever it be. I know my moral compass, I know what's right, and this show is not great. It has whatever it has in it, or this music's not great, it has what, and I know, I, I won't be promoting it, I won't, but it's something that I enjoy. I find it funny, I find it entertaining, there's war, there's this, there's that, doesn't matter, we don't have to go into details, but my moral compass is solid. What's the danger there? If you permit me, Father, I, I think um, there's a huge difference between the work of the Holy Spirit inside of me that is objective, that speaks truth, that says this is sin, this is not sin, right? Versus my own personal moral compass, right? That could degrade with time. And actually not could, it does degrade with time. The more I expose myself to sin, even if I think it's little sin, right? It degrades with time. And that's quite problematic. So. Again, I don't want to be too harsh on this. I, I am very much pro people um, consuming clean entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. And I think everybody needs this. Again, me being the first, like I said. However, <clears throat> as Christians, we need to stop pretending as if God is not holy, right? So, so there's a reason that God says, um, be holy like your Father in heaven is holy. But when God says in the Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So, so why is it that the ones that are pure in heart are the ones seeing God? It's because God is pure. And I, I'm meant to be in his likeness. So as long as we stop playing this game, essentially, and, and, and stop pretending this, I think, I think we could look at the wide spectrum of, of type of entertainment and, and be wise in choosing what is clean. Because if my objective is heaven, then I think everything falls in line. If my objective is pure entertainment, regardless of the repercussions, then we have a problem, 